Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm answering question number three from the International A-Level Edexcel Mechanics M1 January 2021 paper. This is about a parcel of mass 20 kilograms, which is at rest on a rough horizontal floor, and the coefficient of friction between the parcel and the floor is 0 0.3. Two forces, both acting in the same vertical plane of magnitudes 200 newtons and T newtons, are applied to the parcel. The line of action of the 200 newtons force is 15 degrees to the horizontal, and the line of action of the T newton force makes an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal, as shown in Figure 1. The, P, the particle is modelled. Sorry, the parcel is modelled as a particle. P. Find the smallest value of T, which is that tension in this string here. Or it's not, it's not a tension, not a string. It's like the, the line of action of this force T. This force. Find the smallest value of the force T, for which P remains in equilibrium. Okay, so now I've got like a replica of that down here so I can see everything properly so we know that there's certain forces acting on this particle okay and some of those forces are the weight which is not marked that's the weight and you also got the reaction force acting perpendicular to the surface that it's on so of course the reaction force is going to be vertical so you got a reaction force acting vertically upwards and you've got the weight, which is 20 G newtons, 20 kilograms, so 20 G newtons, G being the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, those are the f forces acting. There's another force acting as well, okay, which is basically the friction. Now, that's what we have to understand in this question. How does the friction act? Okay, so we want to find the smallest value of the tension T the smallest value of t for which this remains in equilibrium okay the smallest value of t now it could remain in equi equilibrium in in two ways one could be that uh, i mean the limits of its equilibrium is that it's almost it's about to slide in this direction and the other limit would be where it's about to slide in that direction so which one requires t to be as small as possible well if t is just stopping it from being pulled in this direction, that will be a smaller value than T being, you know, um, just sufficient to stop it sliding into that direction. Okay, because to make it slide in this direction, T is going to be bigger. It's going to have to be bigger because it's going to work against the component of this force in this way. And if it's trying to move it that way, the friction will act against it. Okay, but if you're use, if, if it's about to slide in the opposite direction, in this direction here, then the friction will be acting to prevent the motion and the tension here, that, or not the tension, the value of T will just be helping the friction to stop it moving. So the value of T to be as small as possible, the friction should act this way. Okay, the friction should act this way because that means it's on the point of sliding in that direction, in which case friction has reached its maximum value, F max. Okay, so this is, on the, this is the case where T is going to be the smallest value such that this stays in equilibrium, that it doesn't move, but it's on the point of moving towards this direction because the friction will be acting opposite to the, the, you know, the direction that it wants to move and the tension and the friction will act together to balance out this force so the tension will be as small as possible. If the question said find the, the, the biggest value of T, for which P remains in equilibrium, then you would say that the tension is going to act in the opposite direction because T is, uh, that, that means it's going to slide, it's about to move in the, in the direction of T, this way, okay, and the friction is trying to prevent that motion, so the friction would act in the opposite direction, and T would be like, you know, have to be bigger because it's going to be the, the value of the friction plus the component of this in that direction. So that's how you, you're supposed to think here to realize in which direction the friction is going to act. Okay, For it to be the smallest value of T, that means um, it's just enough to prevent it being pulled towards the left, in which case the friction will act together with it and it, will be, it won't have to be as big as possible. That's the smallest it will be. Okay, So we, we, we know F max has been achieved because it's on the verge of sliding. 
that's the smallest value of t it's just about to slide that way and the tension is stopping it so f max has been achieved so we know that f max is equal to mu r so we have that achieved so now let's just start resolving forces so that we can um, get some somewhere here now this is where question is worth nine marks okay and in a lot of these questions even if you're not sure how to to proceed to find what you need to find which is the t here um, you can get very far by just resolving forces perpendicular and parallel to the plane so here we're going to resolve vertically now you've got to be very careful here a lot of people will say r equals 20 g newtons and they think they've got it no if these two forces were horizontally acting horizontally then yes but these are acting at an angle so they're going to have a component which is also in the vertical direction okay so they're going to have a component okay which is going to be like up here and this one's going to have a component up here okay there's 200 newtons and they're also going to have a component which is horizontal both of them okay so they have a component which is horizontal and vertical which is in the two directions that we need. So this is going to be, this is angle here is 25, as you can see. This angle here is 15. So if I want to resolve this force in this direction, I have to go away from the angle. So this is going to be T times the sine of the angle 25. And here I have to go again away from the angle, 200 times the sine of 15. 200 times the sine of 15. And if I resolve this force in parallel to the plane, I have to go into the angle 25 degrees. So this is T times cosine of 25. And similarly, I have to go into the angle. This will be 200 times cosine 15. Okay, so I have all the forces now resolved and I can now, you know, find my resultant. So R is not just r equals 20 g, it's r plus 200 sine 15 plus t sine 25. Be very careful here not to mix up your 15s and your 25s in your calculation. I'm sure a lot of you will make mistakes with that and write 25 instead of 15 by mistake. Okay, so those are the upward forces and they're equal to zero, uh, equal to, sorry, 20 g newtons. Okay, so the upward forces and the downward forces balance each other out. All right, so I can, from here, I can say R is equal to 20G minus um, 200 sine 15 minus T sine 25. Okay, so that's what R is equal to. Now I can resolve my forces um, horizontally. Now I like to keep the, it's about to slide, we're going to say it's about to slide in that direction. So I'm going to take that direction as positive. It doesn't really matter here because in equilibrium, but I always like to, to do that. I'm, I'm preventing it from sliding in this direction. So I'm going to put this direction as positive in this case. So I'll have 200 times the cosine of 15. That's the only force acting in this direction. And that's going to be equal to um, T times the cosine of 25 plus F max. Okay, plus F max. So now what I can I do is I want to find what T is. Now I know that F max is equal to mu R. And I know that mu is equal to 0 0.3. So what I can do is I can, I can write R. I can take the R and I can say let's multiply it by 0 0.3 and get F max. So I can use this equation here. I can say F max is equal to mu R, which is 0 0.3 times. 20g minus 200 sine 15 minus t sine 25. So okay, now we have to expand this bracket. So we can say now f max is equal to 0 0.3 times 20, which is 6, so that's 6g minus 0 0.3 times 200, which is 60, so that's 60 times sine 15 and 0 0.3 times minus t sine 25 which is minus 0 0.3 t sine 25 i'm not writing these as decimals i'm going to keep everything exact until the last step now i can replace the f max in this formula now with what f max is equal to so i can now say 200 200 times cosine of 15 is equal to so i've got this t cosine 25 
t cosine 25 plus f max. So plus all of this. So I have 6g minus 60 sine 15 minus 0.3t sine 25. So I can keep the t's on one side and everything else I can just subtract or add to get it to the other side. So I've got to take away 6g and add 60 sine 15 to both sides. So I've got 200 times cosine of 15 minus 6g plus 60 sine 15. And this side I'm left with these t terms. So I can take the t as a common factor. I can write cosine of 25 minus 0 0.3 times the sine of 25. And now I have to just divide both sides by this bracket. So I have 200 times cosine of 15 minus 6 times g, which is 9.8 plus 60 sine 15. All over this bracket here, which is cosine of 25 minus 0 0.3 sine of 25. Okay, so now I can take out my calculator and find out what that is. Okay, so first of all, make sure we're in degree mode. Yes, we are. And then we can just get our fraction button. And we have 200, use the mouse, 200 cosine 15. Close that bracket there first. Minus 6g, so I can put, six, uh, I can put times 9.8 now. g is 9.8. Plus, we got uh, 60 times sine 15. Close that bracket, sine 15, close that bracket. Okay, divided by, I've got cosine of 25. And close the bracket here, and minus 0 0.3 sine 25. And then we can press equals, and it gives us 192.316. So we can say the tension is equal to, I'll round it to 3 SF, 192 newtons, not tension. The force T is 192 newtons. I could round this to 1 SF, 2 SF, I can write it as 190 newtons. I can write it as 192 newtons. Um, here it's perfectly fine to use 2 SF because we use G in our calculations. If you don't use G in your calculation, if there's no G in your calculation, then you have to round it to 3 SF. If you do use G in your calculations, then you can round it to 2SF. But if you give it to 3SF, you'll still get the marks, no problem. Um, so that's why it's basic, generally safer in your exam to just round to 3SF um, for these kind of questions. Because then whether you use G or not, it will still be acceptable um, to 3SF. Whereas 2SF will only be acceptable when you use G, and it won't be acceptable when you don't use G. So just in case, it's safer just to use 3SF. That's what I say for the exam. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number three from this January 2021 paper. Other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that should appear somewhere over here. And, and there will be a playlist appearing somewhere in this region which should show questions or, um, from the topic of statics. You can click on this icon to um, subscribe to my channel. And on the top of the page, there would have been a card showing once in a while, which will take you to another past paper that you might want to watch. Thank you for watching.